What's going on everybody? Welcome to Design Smith. Today I want to show you how to recreate these glowing orbs in Adobe Illustrator. Now I found these glowing orbs on Pinterest and I'm pretty sure that it is a photograph. However, I wanna show you how you can take something like this and recreate it using Illustrator and then I'm gonna finish off some effects in Photoshop. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take this down to 50% and then Command 2 to lock it down. And all we need to do here is grab our ellipse tool and it doesn't matter what the color is, we're just gonna create these circles here. Okay, so here's our framework for all of these spheres. Let's move them over here and we'll just change it to black for now. Now I've gotta unlock this, bring it back up to 100% on the opacity and then lock it down again. All right, so we need to color these orbs here and I'm not gonna use my gradient panel over here on this side, we're gonna use the blend tool. So I'll show you how to do the first one and then I'll do the rest of them just really quickly. So we're gonna select this one right here and hit copy and paste in front. And we're gonna bring this circle down to about here. And now we're just gonna color drop this little circle with the lighter blue and the darker blue right here with the larger circle. And now select both of these and double click on our blend tool over here. And we're gonna do specified steps. And we're gonna blend by doing option command B. Now I'm gonna switch over to my direct selection tool and select just this smaller circle and bring it up just a little bit. So that gives us a nice radial blend right here. And I just realized it'll be a lot faster for me to duplicate this and change the colors rather than blending all of these circles. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so I have them all copied and let's go ahead and go to object unlock and we will deselect the image over here and we'll just delete the black ones right there. And now what I'm gonna do is use my direct selection tool and select the smaller circle and we'll select this lighter green and then with the larger circle, select the darker green. And I'll just repeat this same process for all of these spheres. All right, and now I'm just gonna arrange these the same way that they are in our original image. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and drop a black background here so we can easily compare these two and make sure that they're matching up. All right, so now we need to create the reflections. So I'm going to hold down option and shift and drag, and I'm just gonna rotate this here. And there's several different ways that you can achieve this, but this is the way I like to do it. I'm gonna draw a black circle above this reflection here, and I'm gonna use a gradient of dark grays right here maybe like 20 and then 40. Change the angle to 90 degrees and on the lighter color, lower the opacity to about 90%. All right, so I did a little bit more editing because I wanted to make sure that this looked nice and realistic. So on the darker black, I just went all the way down to zero. And then for the lighter one, I still did zero, but it has an opacity of 70%. So that way the reflection just kind of fades off into black. And you can also move the location of the darker black up to about 30 to 40%. All right, that reflection is looking good right there. Now all we need to do is copy this reflection over to the other ones that we actually see the reflection on. So that would be the green, purple, teal, this pink, and this blue. The yellow, purple, and red are being covered up by these other orbs, so we won't be able to see those. All right, so this process should be fairly quick. Let's see if we run into any issues at all. So let's just rotate this, and we'll copy this over here and align it perfectly with that and just make sure that we go right there let's bring this blue to the front i'm going to set my anchor point to the bottom on this one and just kind of barely raise this up a little bit that way it's covering up those weird lines there now let's copy this one down here rotate it and align this with that purple i'll make it just a hair bigger and we'll send that to the back and then bring it front one time now we'll do this teal one. I'm gonna play around with this purple one a little bit. I want it to be a little bit lighter. There we go. Now let's cover up this teal one. Just a hair bigger, just like we did with the other ones. Now select both of those, send it to the back, and then bring it forward one time. It's a little too bright, so let's bring it up to about 60% there. Now we'll do this pink one. Now I think we'll copy this one over. A little bit too dark there, so let's bring this down to 50%. Send this to the back and then bring it forward. And then lastly, we'll do this blue one here. And we'll copy this same one up here. Align it and size it down. Make it a little bit bigger and then align it perfectly here. 
And we gotta send that back behind the pink one. And we're good. Let's bring this up. Let's bring that up to about 40%. All right, looking good. All right, so now let's select the whole thing, copy it, and paste it into Photoshop as a smart object. And it's a vector, so we can size this however big we want to. And let's just kind of move it maybe like right there or so. It looks good. All right, I'm gonna add a layer right up here at the top of grain. We're gonna fill it with 50% gray. We're gonna go over here to filter and camera raw filter and do a grain of about 25. The roughness of about 30. And we'll do a vignette of about negative 30. And hit okay. And change our blending mode from normal to overlay. So it's a really small thing, but if you look closely, you can see there's a really light filter of grain here, and it just kind of gives it a little bit more texture and makes it look more realistic. But here's a side-by-side -side comparison of our original versus our new one. And one thing that I may do is go in here and just kind of add in some blurs right here with these reflections. But for the most part, you can see how fairly simple it is to recreate this using Illustrator. All right, well, I hope I taught you something today. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.